seterusnya nombor 8 pula ni force and motion tu yang kita belajar form 5. So dia um, diagram 8.1 shows the car mass of 1500 kg sliding down the hill. So the car experience acceleration atau the frictional force iaitu 2500 newton. Okay, so dia minta what is the meaning of acceleration dulu. So, ni rate of change of velocity. Mm -hmm. Lepas tu dia suruh based on diagram 8.1, calculate the component of the weight parallel to the slope of the hill WX. Nah, so, ni dia suruh cari double, uh, apa? Dia suruh cari component of weight parallel to the slope tu, WX. Okay, so... Yang ni macam boleh buat apa yang kotak tu untuk boleh buat kotak dekat um, kereta tu. Weight dia punya horizontal component. Lepas tu kita macam boleh buat kotak lah untuk angle tu kita nak letak angle. Masa kita boleh uh, pasti akan dapat um, sin 30 lah. Sin 30 equals to kan sign tu opposite of hypotenuse. So opposite dia uh, adalah um, component of weight parallel to slope. Berarti dia punya hypotenuse is the weight. Pasti kalau kita nak cari um, wx tu equals to weight times sin 30. Nah, pasti weight tu equals to mg atau boleh je kira terus. Uh, mg tu 1500 times 9.81. 9.81 tu gravitational acceleration for the time dengan sin 30. The final answer kita dapat 7357.5 Newton. So, still the resultant force acting on the car. So, resultant force equals to yang force kita dapat tadi tolak dengan frictional force. So, boleh tolak dengan 2500 akan dapat 4857.5 Newton. So, dia nak acceleration of the car. So, the acceleration of the car guna formula F equals to MA. And F tu kita guna resultant force yang kita dapat tadi. And equals to mass dia 1500. So, to A nak cari. So, A equals to resultant force bahagi dengan 1500 akan dapat 3.23 uh, meter second negative tu. Acceleration dia. Okay. So, okay. Soalan C pula. Based on the concept of force, explain why the car driver has to press the accelerator when the car moves up but has to press the brake when the car moves downward. So yang ni pun macam general knowledge juga kita. So kalau when move upward, the car moves against gravitational force and decelerate. Um, um, so kita kena press the accelerator to increase the thrust, thrust and make sure the car does not move downward. Mm -hmm. So uh, when move downward, the car is accelerating because gravitational force is acting on it. So kita kena press the brake to slow down the car by increasing the frictional force. So, dia pergi slow, slow ke bawah. Okay, so, seterusnya, dia bagi soalan D kan. Ada diagram 8.3 ni, ada show for long way. J, K, L, and M. With different specification, you are required to determine the most suitable lawn mower to cut grass effectively. Okay. Jadi um, seterus sama juga kena buat table macam tadi. Study the specification of the four lawn mowers based on the following aspects. Okay, yang pertama dia nak method of moving the lawn mower, mass of the lawn mower, size of the cutter blade, and the angle between the handle and the horizontal line. So, 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 I explain the suitability of each aspect and then determine the most suitable lawn mower. So, so, kita kena pilih lah lawn mower yang memenuhi karakteristik yang kita pilih. Nah, so, first, kalau method of moving the lawn mower, kita guna push. So, kalau push, dia akan produce a larger downward force. Hmm. 
Ini pun common sense kan Kalau push ni kiranya awak gang dengan gravity lah Kan so push bawah Gravity bawah So cantik ha, Tapi kalau awak pull Tarik ke atas Awak lawan dengan gravity bawah So awak You won't get most lah In fact awak melawan gravity You rugi lah So why do you do that kan So The obvious answer push Tapi memang kan Dulu-dulu Mesti rumput ada juga yang pull ha, Maybe uh, Akitab tak belajar fizik kot so, Alright Next Terusnya dia nak uh, Mass of the lawn mower Which is same dia So guna large mass So The total downward force greater So Maksudnya dia punya apa punya blade tu dia akan lagi boleh in contact dengan the grass lagi dia lagi tekan rumput ha, kan? lagi tekan ah ha, lagi tekan rumput dia lepas tu um, size of the cutter blade buat large macam boleh cut more grass lah ni pun common sense juga lah lepas the angle between the handle is big so yang ni uh, um, 20 degree to 35 So kita pilih yang paling besar Sebab kalau the larger the angle, the greater the force Jadi so, uh. ni boleh uh, masukkan dalam formula tu lah Formula Apa? Uh, Fy Fy Masukkan dalam sin Sin ah. tertipa Yang so, produce paling tinggi Sebab ah. sin lagi besar kan? Cuba hmm. compare, for example Um, I don't know, cuba tekan kalkulator, sin sin um, 35, berapa? Dengan sin 20 So, kalau sin 35, nampak berapa? Sin 35 0.57 Sin 20 0.34 So, you see, lagi besar angle, lagi menang Sebab dia banyak masa akan kan makin tegak awak hmm. makin makin mampu awak tekan untuk uh, dia punya vertical component maknanya you are contributing more to the uh, vertical component tapi horizontal horizontal component menurunlah sebab cos kan kalau hmm. cos 90 zero hmm. kan so dia macam kena ada balance okay in this case kita nak lagi besar lah sebab kita nak lagi tekan so uh, angle kena besar okay alright lagi Uh, so kita kena pilih uh, kita kena pilih um, mana lawn mower yang memenuhi setiap uh, karakteristik yang kita pilih so lawn mower M. So bagi tahu sebab dia sebab uh, the mass that is pushing large mass large blade and large angle between the handle. Okay, so tu saja. Saya nak tanya boleh? Uh, kalau yang larger mass tu Reason dia saya buat larger weight to the ground boleh ke? Uh, greater weight to the ground, ya yeah, sure boleh Okay, so. okay uh, lagi soalan If you have question, just buka mic je Tak payah nak raise your hand ke apa Okay, uh, me so far it's pretty clear Soalan yang uh, Diorang present ni, so saya pun tak ada masalah so. Okay, alright. Lagi? Yes, terusnya section C, so um, kalam pula. Kalam ni tu yang kita pergi. Faham, silakan. Okay, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, untuk salah satu ni, uh, dia cakap, in an experiment, two identical toy rockets A and B are propelled along horizontal guide wires using two balloons. Diagram 1.1 and diagram 1.2 show the initial position for the distance of the toy rockets and their final position after 2 second so kalau kita tengok diagram tu uh, toy rocket A dia punya distance lagi jauh daripada toy rocket B okay. so first question dia cakap what is the meaning of acceleration so yang ni senang je cakap je rate of change of velocity ok ajar saya nak test it kalau apa masuk velocity Ah. Ah, kawan nak tolong apa sebab velocity. Ini speed tepi direction kan. Okey, salah. Okey, displacement apa sebab velocity? 
Ha, betul lah tu nama tapi the yeah. proper definition dia apa? Break of change of speed Bukan, apa pun dia pula Break of displacement eh, rate, ha. of. rate of change of displacement Eh, velocity Apa maksud speed? Rate of change of distance Ha, rate of change of distance eh Apa maksud force? Push or pull upon an object. Okay, tu yang ni lah, yang 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 jenis ni punya. Rate of change of momentum. Okay, sebab semua fizik ni semua dia rate. Kalau belajar element nanti di pensiasi kan dia dy dt, dy dt, dy dt. Semua ni rate je. Rate of something, rate of something. Eh, okay, right. Teruskan, kalau. Okay, untuk soalan B, uh, first question tu dia cakap uh, compare the acceleration of tau rocket A and tau rocket B so kita tahu yang tau rocket A tu dia gerak dari jauh dalam masa 2 second so kita tahu acceleration of tau rocket A is higher than tau rocket B ni kalau nak buat simbol yang more than tu boleh yang cikgu? boleh uh, greater than less than boleh tak rasa lah uh, so question tu Relate the acceleration to the forward force acting on the tau rocket. So, kita tahu, uh, the greater the force acting on the tau rocket, the higher the acceleration. Ini senang sebab F equals to M E N. So, soalan tiga pula. Compare the final velocity of tau rocket A and tau rocket B after 2 second. So the final velocity of tau rocket A is higher than tau rocket B after 2 second. Uh, lepas tu, uh, number 4, compare the change in momentum of tau rocket A and tau rocket B. So the change of momentum of tau rocket A is, is greater than tau rocket B. Sebab uh, acceleration ni lagi tinggi, so final velocity lagi tinggi. So MB minus MU untuk tau rocket A is higher than tau rocket B. Ni impulse. So number 5, relate the final velocity to the impulse given to the tau rocket. So the, the higher the final velocity, the higher the impulse. Okay, um, so, so let's see lah. So this uh, soalan ni cakap diagram 1.3 shows the sequence photos of a long jump contestant landing in a certain manner to avoid serious injury. Based on diagram 1.3 and using your knowledge of impulsive force, explain how the contestant managed to avoid serious injury while landing. So impulsive force equals to MV minus MU over time. So macam mana kita nak reduce dia punya uh, impulsive force, kita kena higher dia uh, increase the time impact ah, So, the contestant has to bend his knees before the landing. So, this can in increase the time impact during landing, thus the impulsive force will be reduced. The cont contestant can prevent injury when landing. Okay, very good. Full mark. Okay, they explain step by step. Okay, next so, one. So, soalan D. So diagram 1.4 shows the apparatus for a high jump event. You are required to give some suggestion to ensure the safety and comfort of the high jump contestant by doing some modification. Using your knowledge on force and motion and properties of material, explain your suggestion based on the flooring aspect. So number one, the size and thickness of the materials. So kita, of course, I can pile yang big and thick ni matters. Sebab apa? To increase the time impact and reduce the impulsive force. Lain tu boleh nak juga uh, cover more surface area kan. So kita besar, katakanlah mamak tu dia terlompat jauh sangat. So end up ending atas rumput lah. So tak nak lah kan. Okay, so cover more surface area pun boleh. Okay, lagi. So yang second punya uh, aspect, the LS Elasticity of the matrix. So kita buat very elastic. 
to absorb the impact and increase the time of impact. So only you just pass it for your So material of the bar, the carbon fiber, about strong and light, uh, strong tool to prevent it from breaking easily. Mm -hmm. So this is to deal with So as we are compared, the tire of the high jumper testing. So it can be a tight and light suit. So it reduce air friction when running or jumping. So it's very much force. So we uh, can make a conclusion. So we have the 10 marks. So the material should be big and thick and very elastic while the bar made of carbon fiber whereas the attire must be tight and light. Uh, ni saya saya tak sure cikgu awak macam mana tapi kalau untuk soalan yang tak ada yang tak ada choice awak tak boleh buat conclusion tau awak perlu goreng satu lagi ayat satu lagi point sebenarnya so i'm not sure kalau cikgu salah saja sana cuba awak cuba uh, double confirm nanti dengan cikgu so kena tambah SPS tu yes betul awak kena goreng satu lagi lah uh, i don't know comment pasal Again, the material of the mattress waterproof, okay, kan waterproof so that uh, can be used on a rainy day. So if you check about sir, uh, at least two below fall on back of the body. Ah, uh, boleh okay. about about the jumping technique pun boleh juga kan ada yang silang ada yang lipat kaki kan so landing on the back betul. Sebab dulu dulu zaman Olympic kalau tengok orang archive kan Olympic tahun dua puluhan. Kat London tahun 1920 eh 1920 dulu tak ada tilang tu so don't need landing atas kaki so uh, kesannya sakit lah kaki ha, so boleh landing belakang larger surface area kurang sakit pun boleh juga apa yeah. lagi komen pasal colour boleh tak colour of the mattress colour cerah kan supaya tak panas pun boleh ok lah just be creative ok 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 lagi Okay, Assalamualaikum. Sekarang kita akan sambung kepada soalan 8 untuk section C. Jadi, uh, diagram shows two identical steel ball di mana string itu ialah elastik dan dia mempunyai fix to a horizontal surface. The spring are push down and the length pun, length yang di push pun sama of M and spring N. So diagram 8.2 shows maximum height achieved by both springs after the hand is released. Jadi kita kena menganggap uh, all the three factors kat sini ialah constant iaitu same material, same coil dan juga dia punya original uh, diameter of the length. So jadi soalan A1 dia tanya apakah maksud kekenyalan? Elasticity is the property of a spring that enables it return to its original length when the force acting on is remove. Jadi maksudnya uh, keupayaan untuk spring tu kembali ke posisi asal bila force sesuatu force dah dilepaskan on is remove. Itu the meaning of elasticity. And then to A2 A2 Cakap dia suruh menggunakan uh, diagram tadi dia suruh compare first thickness of the spring wire and the maximum height. Lepas tu dia suruh relate thickness of the screen wire dengan maximum height. Lepas tu dia suruh buat deduction menggunakan relationship between thickness and the screen wire and the elasticity potential of energy screen. So basically soalan macam ni uh, free mark lah. Sebab ada soalan direct yang kita tak perlu fikir, kita just compare je. And so untuk first point, thickness of spring N is greater than spring M. Maximum height reached by the balls of spring N ialah higher than spring M. Lepas so height uh, of the ball increase as the thickness increase. Thickness ni dia directly proportional to spring constant. Elasticity potential energy pun increase bila thickness of the spring increase. Jadi ni cuma free mark lah untuk ni. Banyak typo eh. Hati-hati. <laughs> spring yang macam-macam. Okay. Try to avoid eh sebab 
uh, SPM kami taklah skema sangat full sebab saya pun marking SPM kan just tapi nak nampak ni lah kan nampak sikit SBP cool sikit kan okay alright lagi okay. uh, lepas tu dan soalan B dia suruh dia suruh apa ni dia cakap ada eksperimen yang dia, dia jalankan untuk study the relationship between force and then juga extension of spring jadi dia suruh plot the graph untuk relationship tadi lepas tu untuk soalan kedua dia minta explain how determine the value of spring constant iaitu k dan juga elastic potential energy from the graph lepas tu dia suruh state the physics law regarding the graph dia jadi dia dah minta direct kat sini jadi markah pertama kita boleh kita lukis dia punya graph dari proportional f against x and then kita beritahu dia punya gradient jadi gradient tu is the spring constant lepas tu area and the graph ialah elastic potential energy dan graph ni di di terbit kan eh di di publish oleh Fuchs law dia yang menjumpai uh, teori ni ya yeah, betul dia sekarang pun so kalau area and the graph apa formula dia uh, uh, formula triangle uh, so 1 over 2 times base times height Yeah, one to two effects. Okay, all right. Next. next. And then to soalan next question. Okay, ni soalan uh, application. Jika ada student tu, dia dia, dia buat exercise advice untuk schoolmate dia. Jadi dia suruh kita explain apa modification yang kita boleh buat konsep. Apa karakteristik yang sesuai untuk Uh, that can extend the muscle of the body effectively, effectively. Jadi the modification Yang pertama is high spring constant Ada short, small diameter and thick wire Maksudnya kena ada ketiga-ketiga je lah untuk give the greatest uh, intense kan Jadi reason dia kita boleh buat higher elastic potential energy And then parallel nourishment of the spring untuk give maximum intensity when stretch. Dan ni ada jawapan lain tak untuk reason parallel? Ah uh, sama jelah reason dia pun sama dengan atas ni kan tapi awak tak boleh ulang. Ah uh, tak boleh ulang kan. Lawak buat macam ni baguslah. Kiranya is a good ah uh, goreng yang baguslah. Satu lagi actually you get you get very lots of point kat sini. Satu dua, tiga, empat ok sebab selalunya orang letak one by one small diameter apa reason dia thick wire apa reason tapi awak dah lamsam kat sini actually you got tons of mark over here dah banyak so bagus lah kan ok alright okay, jadi untuk uh, sekarang kita kena add more spring jadi device tu dia become stiffer and dia tak break ah. this tapi dia punya design pun sama juga sebab lagi banyak spring, lagi intense, lagi susah nak nak stretch and then dia punya handle tu, kita guna polymer the light dan juga the strong ok yang kalau seperti yang saya cakap kita boleh tambah point tadi lah untuk jadikan 10 marks kan siapa ada? siapa nak goreng berapa? Uh, tengok sikit man, gambar dia man anyone ada point lagi nak goreng anything yang yang gila-gila pun tak apa as long as it's creative kalau saya longer spring boleh ke apa longer spring longer spring tapi dah contradict lah dengan point awak yang short spring tadi so so ya yeah. ni material material spring Uh, material ni dah, hmm. tapi tadi Amar bagi untuk dia punya handle lah untuk spring ni pun boleh juga apa spring, apa metal lah, copper ke apa kan ataupun nak tambah lagi fancy sebab apa tujuan dia nak meregangkan otot dengan berkesan so boleh letak ni uh, apa, counter satu, dua, tiga kan so awak boleh kira, so awak aim dengan timer katakanlah awak nak aim dalam seminit, awak nak buat Uh, 50 pool. So ada ada timer, ada counter senang nak kira. So tu masalah ya. Awak boleh go crazy 
ya sampai tahap macam tu asalkan kreatif and uh, capai dia punya objektif which is uh, for the masa okay. so there's no dalam skema kami punya SPM cakap mengikut kreativiti calon tak boleh tu so saya tak berhak lah nak salahkan jawapan awak yang macam eh merepek je tak salahkan dia kreatif yang masuk akal yang boleh jambil Okay, alright. Walaupun dia luar konsep fizik eh? Luar konsep fizik, contohnya macam mana? Macam polimer tu lah. Polimer ya. Nak masuk chemistry sikit boleh. Okay, you oh. touch about the the chemical bonding. You know, something like that pun boleh. Simple. So, ya. Yeah. Kalau material memang kena cakap material lah. Eh? Tak boleh cakap macam strong material. Ah Itu pun boleh juga. Macam contohnya untuk buat kapal. Untuk buat boat, material fiberglass tapi ramai budak tak tahu fiberglass tu apa benda So pada yang tak tahu awak boleh bercakap strong bird light material Itu pun boleh, tapi reason dia kena goreng lain berat lah okay, Sebab kalau saya buat fiberglass, saya boleh tulis reason dia strong and light Tapi kalau awak punya modification strong and light, awak kena goreng lain lah untuk reason Mungkin uh, last longer, more durable you know? Okay Okay, alright. Thank you, uh, Sas. Okay, very good. I'm happy with the presentation. Semua menjawab soalan. Salah, -salah pun salah kecil-kecil je. Okay, alright. Next. Uh, sir, sir. Yep. Uh, boleh ambil stok kejap tak? Saya nak pergi tandas. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Tak tahan ni. Okay. Lampak. Okay. Take five lah eh. Jumpa lagi dalam 3-20 minit. Ha, dalam 2-3 minit lagi. Okay. Oh, dia terus cabut. Okay, alright. Korang pun nak pergi minum air, pergilah. Hello, Assalamualaikum Pak Kamil Ya, ya, ya Haa, ah, saya ah, Dah tahu ke Pak Kamil saya nak conteng? Haa, ah, ya, ya, ya Budak tengah conteng ni Haa, ah, ok, ok, ok Haa, ah, tak apa, tak apa Sekejap eh Okey, tanda tu sebagai F. So, awak buat jarak di antara center lens ke F itu focal point dia. Center lens eh. Okey, tu center lens ke F. Ini ah ni pun kita boleh buat sebagai takrifan eh untuk F tadi. Awak nak tulis nyatakan pun boleh, nak buat lukisan pun boleh takrifan eh. Okey, macam mana Afiq ni? Pak kamera tak butang view option. Okey. Ha tekan pasu annotate. Ada zoom ratio mute yang side by side je. Oh, tak ada yang nanti eh. Jadi, ada Sis, tiga sebab je. dia pakai iPad. So, kita orang tengok. Oh, faham, faham. Oh, patutlah. Okay, tak apa, tak apa. Tak apalah, okay. uh, biar you conteng je lah. Okay. <laughs> okay, Fik. Terima kasih, Fik. Okay, okay. Baik, baik. Okay, next. Okay, jom kita masuk seterusnya apa? Gravitation eh. Uh, gravitation ni sekolahnya STF eh? STF eh buat gravitation, betul ke? 
Yeah, betul. Okay, alright. So this is a new topic and you are very privileged sebab awak belajar time form 4. Saya dulu belajar uh, kat UK baru cover uh, gravitation. Uh, masa kat college pun tak cover lagi. So yeah, lucky you lah. Okay, lucky pada kita seksa dan maju. Sir, tak? kita orang hmm. buat dengan uh, pressure dulu. Okay, pressure dulu. Boleh, tak masalah. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, saya nak present tajuk pressure soalan nombor 4. Diagram 4.1 shows a patient undergoes a blood transfusion. The blood flows from the blood bag into the patient's vein based on the concept of pressure. 4a, what is the meaning of pressure? Pressure is force per unit area. Um, definition ni kita boleh dapat daripada formula pressure which is force over area. B, explain how blood flows from the blood bag yeah. into the patient's vein. Siapa ni? Sabrina kan? Yes. Yeah, so um, sebenarnya fizik dia tak apa suka sangat kalau cakap dalam bentuk matematik macam mass per unit area. So it's not very accurate. Walaupun memang tu formula dia kan. Tapi awak akan cakap uh, force acting force acting per unit. Force acting normally normally maknanya kena 90 degrees on a surface area. Fizik dia hanya skema sikit. Dia tak boleh. Contohnya apa eh? Macam formula. Ah, sir, sir. Ya. Yeah. Ah, sorry, sir. Our force acting normally 90 degree eh? Force acting normally on a surface area. Oh, on a... Ah, so, normal tu 90 degrees lah. Oh, okay. Okay. Ah, uh, boleh. Contohnya awak nak tulis maksud uh, velocity. Awak tak boleh tulis S over T ataupun distance and displacement over time. Ah, salah. Dia sebab semua physical quantity ada definition yang yang legit, yang proper one. Okay. Tapi again SPM ni tengok juga ada yang ambil ada tak ambil. So nak ambil langkah selamat kita buat cara betul-betul. Okay alright teruskan uh, Sabrina. Hmm. Thank you sir. B explain how blood flows from the blood bag into the patient's vein. Blood bag is hung at higher than patient's arm. The depth of blood in the patient's vein is greater than the blood bag. The blood pressure in the patient's vein is greater than the blood bag. The difference in pressure produce force and the force help to push the blood flows from the blood bag to the patient's vein. Uh, kalau mention formula boleh boleh dapat. Saya nama formula kat mana? Kalau kita kaitkan dengan formula pressure HOG tu. Ah boleh boleh. Good. Eh kalau nak pakai pressure liquid kan rho gh maknanya awak manipulate apa? Dia punya h kan? Oh, h. Yes, so lagi tinggi h, lagi tinggi pressure. Betul. Sebab tu awak tak pernah nampak kan orang letak bag IV ni sebelah kepala, sebelah katil tak ada. Sesia jelah yang tu kan. Air tak nitik lah. So kena letak setinggi mungkin. Lagi tinggi dulu zaman-zaman uh, World War 1 dulu a uh, askar kan banyak injek kan. So cara dia letak IV nak manipulate the the flow of the air titik tu selain buka tutup valve dia main height. Tinggi rendah. So kalau rendah air keluar slow sikit. Kalau tinggi air keluar lagi sikit. Tapi sekarang macam ada sih. Apa? Kalau valve. Ah uh, dia macam ada ni ada punat kat situ. Dekat sini dia ada macam ada tahu valve macam kepala pipe. Oh. Awak boleh pusing untuk kalau buka habis maknanya air keluar laju lah. Okay, kat somewhere here dia ada macam butang tau. Alah, tak, tak pernah tak pernah cucuk eh. Tak pernah. Ha, bagus lah. Saya pun tak pernah juga tapi selalu saya selalu tengok orang lah kan kat hospital bila cucuk IV dia ada butang sini awak boleh on off. Ha. Besides that kita boleh manipulate pakai height tapi sekarang zaman dah canggih kita ada timer. So kalau awak tengok kalau orang-orang kat hospital lagi hospital yang hospital, hospital orang kaya lah hospital kita private kan pakai IV sini lepas tu cucuk dengan plug. Kenapa? Sebab ada timer. Katakanlah awak nak dia punya IV ni satu jam cucuk dan satu jam keluar 10 ml boleh? So timer ni akan set automatik. Dia pakai elektronik lah eh. So very canggih lah sekarang. So tak payahlah nurse nak datang tukar. Dia biar je. Nurse tu pun boleh buat kerja lain. Okay. Sir, sir. Ya. Yeah. 
Oh, eh, ini yang sebab kenapa tangki kat rumah ke tak atas tu? Oh? Ah, oh iyalah obviously kan tangki kat rumah. Tapi zaman sekarang kalau kat lagi-lagi kat Amerika, apa pasal kan rumah kat sini. Kalau kat Malaysia kita tangki kat atas kan. In fact kalau pasal tak kalau pergi taman perumahan ada tangkai air besar gila. Lepas tu tulis Taman Megah Jaya. Betul tak? Ada. Ha. Itu selain untuk buat landmark, untuk nak, nak tandakan lah orang tangki air ni kepunyaan taman ni. Satu lagi kita buat tinggi-tinggi sebab ni lah nak take advantage of ROGH. Tapi ada juga rumah tau, rumah dekat Amerika ni like I said. Dia punya tangki air sebelah. Atas tanah. In fact ada yang over underground. Ha, siapa boleh jawab? Macam mana air, tangki air underground. Buat dia pump je. Yes, good. Okay, dia beli pump. Macam mana nak tahu rumah tu beli pump ke tak? Bila dia on je bunyi. Pumping tengah on. Ha. Saya tahu lah sebab rumah saya pakai air pump. Ma, ma, my my in-law. So, bila on je. Oh, ada lah. So, benefit pakai pump ni air kuat lah sedap lah. Macam air sungai. Okay, alright. Okay, je lah. Okay, jom. Next one. <coughs> okay, next. Um, a watering system needs to be set up in garden. So, okay. Next ni, dia nak kita buat watering system untuk supply air daripada well tu pergi ke um, garden tu. Hmm. So, dia ada bagi. Dia suruh uh, study specification of for watering system ni. First, dia nak thickness of the pipe, power of pumping motor, the position of the pumping motor and the position of tap from the ground surface. Dia ada bagi for system. Okay, first kita tengok dulu thickness of the pipe. Thickness of the pipe ni kita kena pilih yang thicker lah sebab um, back. Uh, kita kena pilih yang thicker lah sebab untuk withstand greater pressure of water tu. So sekarang ni yang thicker adalah sistem J dengan sistem M. Power of pumping motor, um, kita kena, kena pilih yang high power. Okay. To pump more water. I'm um, back. Uh, and high power kita tampak ada sistem J dengan sistem K. Position of pumping motor ni kita kena pilih yang low sebab Motor ni lah yang akan pump water tu daripada deep well ke atas. So kita kena pilih yang low lah sebab dia nak pump daripada bawah tu ke atas. So and low position of pumping motor ni untuk produce greater pressure. Yang kita nampak yang low adalah sistem J and sistem L. Plus dia nak position of the tap from the ground surface. Kita kena pilih yang tap um, position dia low untuk increase velocity of water flow sebab kita tahu liquid pressure ni dia lagi deeper dia la punya pressure lagi tinggi so bila kita letak dekat bahagian bawah dia punya velocity of water tu dia akan lagi laju so um, nampak adalah sistem J and sistem K and based on all that yang paling sesuai sekali kita ada dapat sistem J and expansion dia has thicker pipe, high power pumping motor, low position of pumping motor and position of tap from the ground is low Lalu Sabrina, macam rapper. Boleh rap? Okay. Ah, soalan ke? Macam mana boleh position of power tu main peranan? Macam apa? Position power of pump? Position uh, pump, 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 pump motor. Okay. Apa biasa kalau letak kat dalam air dengan letak kat atas? Oh, okay, very good. So, bila letak kat atas ni, dia kena ada extra effort lah sebab the water the pump has to suck from here sampai atas. So jauh travel dia. So it may take a while for the water to reach the pump. So kurang efficient lah. Ini terus. Okay. So the pump directly react dengan all the water here. Tu lebuk naik. Okay. Ah, uh, Satu lagi korang lah saya nak, nak, nak ajar sikit lah. Cara cepat eh nak pilih pilihan yang betul kita buat style scoring. Maksudnya kita bagi markah untuk benda yang kita suka. Contohnya kita tengok pertama dia punya uh, thickness, thick end. So kita suka yang tebal. So yang tebal kita bagi satu markah. Satu. Yang nipis yang kita tak suka bagilah kosong. Okay next kita tengok apa. Um, uh, pump punya position. Uh, power. 
So kita suka high power. So bagi satu markah. Kita, kita tak suka low, kita bagi zero. So, kita bagi score. So very easy untuk we detect. Yang ketiga, kita tengok uh, position of the pump kan. Kita suka dekat bawah. Sebab dia dekat dengan water source. So yang kita suka, kita bagi satu. Yang kita tak suka, kita bagi kosong. And last one. Uh, position of kepala pipe tu kan. Kita suka dia dekat bawah. Sebab macam biasalah macam pergi kundi kahwin kan bila air air penuh sedap je laju bila air sikit sikit je keluar kan sampai aku kena apa angkat angkat uh, bekas kita tarik tu so kita suka rendah so based on the ni awak kumpulkan skor so mana paling tinggi korang dari segi markah j yeah. <laughs> J, eh? So J is the winner. So senang. Okay. Biasakan uh, teknik ni. Sebab dia cepat and clear. So awak tak tersalah buat pilihan later on. Okay. Alright. Uh, Terwina dah kan? Dah habis kan? Okay. Soalan calculation. Silakan. Okay, uh, the height of water tank from a tap in a house is 15.2. Surface area dibagi 4.8 times 10 power of negative 4. Dia juga bagi density of water 1000 dengan atmospheric pressure 1.02 times 10 power of 5 pascal. So, disuruh calculate the total pressure of the water that flows out from the tap. Boleh guna for formula of P equals to rho GH. Um, rho density dia dah bagi 1000 G uh, gravity acceleration 9.81. Height dibagi juga 15.2. Lepas tu kita tambah dengan atmospheric pressure dapat 25.11 times 10 power of 4 pascal. Uh, so soalan ni saya nak tanya. Macam hmm. ni kan dia bagi atmospheric pressure tapi dia tak dicakap um, yang tank tu open tank. So kita kena tambah sekali ke tak? Dia tak cakap yang apa tank tu open tank? Open tank. Oh open tank. Okay good. Um, for this one um i think you tambah ustaz sini betul sebab okey um kalau soalan biasa-biasa awak buat awak hanya rojih bulat-bulat kita tepat tau sebab that is not the real pressure itu adalah water pressure sebab dunia ni kita ada atmosphere ke sekarang ni kan so bila water katakanlah awak kat sini so ada dua pressure first from the water which is uh, rho gh secondly you have the pressure from the weight of the air udara udara atas ni pun ada bagi tekanan juga pada uh, air ni so kena tambah dengan tekanan atmosfera tu the real sebenar benar benar benarnya okay so you kena tambah so i think Lebih selamat HB and I will, saya lagi suka jawapan macam ni sebab realistik lah kira ni. Okay, alright. Sama. Okay, so thank you. Uh, untuk tu, the force that push the water out from the tap, uh, surface area dia bagi 4.8 times 10 power of negative 4. Kita boleh guna formula pressure equals to force over area. Pressure kita dah dapat tadi 25.11 times 10 power of 4 because to force over area yang dia dah bagi dapat force 120.53 newton. Ya, yeah, good. Cuma saya nak tegur sikit ah yang ni. Ah uh, korang, ini kita panggil standard form tak ni? Ha. Ah oh, laju, kenapa tak? Standard form kena between 1 to 9. Ha, ah, good. Standard form range dia eh. Range standard form kita panggil dia A. Saya panggil bentuk standard form axion tu. Dia nama cuci pinggan tu. Axion. Okay. Di mana? Ha, ni axion. A darab 10 kuasa something kan. A ni range dia must be between 1 and uh, actually 9.9 .9 lah. Okay. 9.9. .9. So awak punya 25 lah. So tak. I will not call this uh, standard form. Tapi taklah salah betul dia. Cuma kurang pro lah. Kita kau boleh nak nampak pro-pro sikit kan. Okay ha. Lain semua okay. And sebenarnya tak ada tolak markah pun yang saya saja mengada nak tegur yang ni. Okay. Alright. Okay. Uh, lagi. Okay. Next one. Okay, okay. next. 
Katrina, let's go. Figure 9 shows a mere set satellite orbiting the Earth with a set escape velocity. So, A, what is meant by escape velocity? Escape velocity is the minimum velocity required by an object on the surface of the Earth to overcome the gravitational force and escape into outer space. B, explain how Myasat satellite can be freed from the gravitational pull of the Earth by using the escape velocity formula V equals to square root 2 gm over R. Jadi, daripada formula, macam ni kita boleh dapat formula V equals to square root 2 gm over R. Um, kan dia kata minimum kinetic energy of an object. So, kinetic energy kita boleh dapat formula 1 over 2 mv squared. And, kita pluskan dengan gravitational potential energy uh, yang kita boleh dapat negative gm m over r equalskan dengan 0. So, bila kita um, kita buat formula dia akan jadi 1 over 2 mv squared equals to gm m over r and dapat v equals to square root 2 gm over r. Okay, kenapa gravitational? Saya baru perasan. Nabi, nama buah kemas. Awak tengah dying in ni kat luar. Okay, uh, kenapa gravitational potential energy dia negatif? Uh, Afina? Sebab kita kan nak escape daripada bumi tu, so dia akan jadi negatif sebab bila gravitational potential energy patutnya ke arah bumi. Tapi hmm. bila dia jadi negatif sebab kita nak keluar daripada bumi. Yes, Betul it's kan? all about, bagus. It's all about a vector lah. Okay, hmm. tapi ini penjelasan yang simple. Tapi in uh, astrophysics punya layout world sebab as, it, uh, as you go outwards, you punya potential energy approaches uh, infinity. Uh, Sampai uh, saya tak nak go to too much about that. Tapi ya, yeah, basically that's about it. Tapi secara mudahnya betul. Sebab awak melawan. Awak nak keluar kan. So, tu lah negatif. So, bawa sana jadi positif. Okay. Uh, soalan satu lagi. So, escape velocity ni bergantung tak? Katakanlah escape velocity ni minimum velocity nak hantar benda keluar bumi kan contohnya. Katakanlah saya nak hantar Okay, katakanlah seorang ini dia mengidam nasi goreng. Saya nak hantar nasi goreng dengan saya nak hantar satu roket. Dia punya escape velocity berlain tak dia punya value? Ah, sebelum tu siapa tahu berapakah escape velocity of the earth? Satu, 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 lapan, empat. Satu, satu, lapan, empat. Sebelum kuasa? Sebelah ribu lah, sebelah ribu meter. Ah, sebelah, yes. 11.2 km per saat. Nah, bukan per, per hour, per saat. Bayangkan, maknanya satu saat awak kena travel 11 km. Nah, laju tak laju. Okay, soalan kedua saya, dia bergantung tak pada mass? Kalau nak hantar satu astronaut dengan tiga astronaut. Do I need to, I need to send more... I need to set apa? I need to produce more force ke tak payah? Ke sama je 11.2. Saya punya escape sama. velocity. Sama. Okay. Escape velocity dia tak bergantung pada mass. Apa tu cikgu? Ini M apa? Ini mass of the planet. Bukan of the object. Sebab tu awak nak, nak, awak nak hantar bulu ayam ke? Nak hantar bola bowling ke? Sama je 11.2 kilometer per second ataupun macam tu lah Amar cakap 1.12 uh, 10 pasal 4 ni ok next one jom ok next C a geostationary stationary satellite remains above the same point on the earth as its orbit it remains a constant distance r from the center of the earth so C1, write an expression in R terms for the distance it travels in 24 hours. So uh, dekat sini dia nak, C1 tu dia nak uh, distance uh, satellite to travel 
in 24 hours. So, um, as we all know, satellite kan dia orbit the bumi. So, dia berpusing. So, dia berpusing. Jadi, saya gunakan uh, formula circle distance equals to 2 pi r. R tu maksudnya um, jarak radius bumi campur dengan H. Okay. Satellite pergi ke permukaan bumi. Orbital radius kan? Okay. Orbital radius. Okay lah. Good. Saya mau nak tanya. Kita ukur radius R ni dari mana ke mana? Center ke center ke surface ke surface? Macam ni ke? Macam ni? A ke B? Cara kira R tu. B. Okay eh. B. Good. Center ke center. Itu kita punya R. Ni, ni sangat penting sebab selalu student dia selalu lupa yang R tu is from center to center. Soalan dia akan trick awak supaya awak ambil surface ke surface. No. Awak boleh tambah lagi radius of dua planet ni. Plus. Okay. Always remember that. Sebab saya dah cakap banyak kali student confirm ada seorang orang akan terlupa. Okay. The R is the Orbital, tu nama ni bukan radius, orbital radius Maksudnya from center of a body to another center of a body Tapi kenapa cikgu? Kadang-kadang saya buat soalan uh, Katakanlah uh, matahari, eh uh, matahari pula Bulat, bumi dengan satellite, uh, for example this is earth And this is a satellite, uh, macam yang I notice lah Kenapa? Bila dia kira, dia ambil untuk satellite tu, dia ambil daripada Surface dia tak pergi center satellite yang ada buat macam ni Apa ni cikgu tak Macam contradicting je point dia ni Kata center ke center Kenapa ini surface Ke center Masa apa jawapan Saya rasa center ke center tu Daripada planet lain Okay, okay. Katakanlah bulan lah Bulan pun satellite juga ah. Bulan Bulan maybe lah Tapi kenapa satellite Aku tak boleh cakap macam tu <laughs> Tak fair lah Nanti dia tambah dengan uh, radius bumi eh? Ah ni betul. Tapi kenapa dia tak tambah dengan center of satellite ni? Dia ambil terus surface kat sini. Mana boleh kan? Patutnya ambil center lah. Tapi soalnya soalan dia tak peduli pun. Dia macam ah, tak payah lah surface. Sebab masa kecil. Good. Pernah tengok tak satellite ISS? Dekat YouTube. Agak-agak besar mana? Ah, saya pernah besar. estimate Estimate lah besar apa Bagi saya comparison Ni je kot, lagi besar pada sekolah kita kan Mana, satelit Satelit kecil je, besar kita alfat tu je Eh, kita alfat eh? Ah, satelit, satelit Bukan ISS, satelit oh. Satelit, mana ada orang langsung satelit, satelit no? Satelit, kecil Sangat kecil So, berapa radius of the earth? Besar. 10 kuasa 12 eh, ke 11 meter. So, berjuta-juta meter. So, kalau nak compare, kalau lah awak ambil kiraan center dengan center dengan satu lagi kiraan surface dengan center, tak banyak beza pun. Beza berapa cenonet je, berapa, berapa km je. Nak compare dengan, we are talking about planet tau, planet beribu ratus juta meter lah, besar lah so tak standing, so kadang-kadang soalan dia ignore tu sebab jawapan pun akan plus minus ok, plus minus by I don't know, 1% 0.5% lari, so, tak banyak, so tak payah lah ok, tapi logik realistiknya kena kalau melibatkan planet lah sebab planet besar kan, tapi kalau satellite lah, tak payah lah ok, ha, ni saya sebab ramai banyak buku tak explain kenapa dia buat macam ni So, sudah pun macam blur Dia, eh, Nak ambil ketanak ni lah, so tu penerangan dia eh. Sebab setelah ni teramatlah kecil nak dikomparkan dengan planet So, tak payah ignore je lah Okay, alright, ah, sambung Okay, untuk C2 Right in terms of R, the expression in its velocity in meter per second So, as we all know, V equals to D over T D tu distance, kita, saya ambil daripada yang nombor satu tadi 
NT 24 hours kita darahkan 60 dengan 60 sebab kita nak da dapat dari um, seconds so V equals to um, bila saya simplifikan pi R over 43200 meter per second tapi saya tak pasti kena expand ke tak pi tu Um, tak perlu, tak perlu. Ni sebab it's gonna be too long. And jawapan ni tak cantik. I think biar macam ni pun okey lah. Okay. okay. Next, um, three, find the value of R. Um, general uh, formula untuk uh, apa? Untuk velocity untuk satellite, V equals to square root gm over R. So, samakan dengan uh, formula yang dekat dua tadi. Pi R over 42. 43200 equals to square root gm over r and then singlekan r masukkan nilai g dan m dan pi dapat jawapan r equals to 4.2 uh, times 10 power of 7 meter okay alright makes sense okay siapa siapa tahu apa beza formula escape velocity dengan linear speed Oh tadi kita tengok kan. Ha, ini yang yang ini, ini linear speed. Apa beza formula dengan uh, in bahasa Malay kita panggil hal laju lepas lah, escape velocity. Perasan tak nampak macam sama ada satu perbezaan? Um, kalau escape velocity, square root 2 gm over r. Okay, ada nombor 2. Okay, ingat eh. So escape velocity ada the number 2. Ni escape velocity. Sama nampak ada V ni pun V. Apa beza dia? The number 2. Okay, remember that. Okay, alright. Okay, I'm good. Lagi, okay, next. Okay, next. D. For the live broadcast of the 2020 Olympic Games taking place in Tokyo, Japan, a network of communication satellites is needed to cover the whole earth. For this purpose, some satellites need to be placed on the earth's surface in certain places. So, um, table 9 shows the characteristic of different satellites at the PQRS. So, I'll end it, examine the specification of the four features of the system, explain the suitability of each specification for all satellites and determine the most suitable satellite system to use for live broadcast for the Olympic Games in Japan. Give a reason for your choice. Okay, jawapan saya, um, kena guna geostationary satellite because direction of motion same as direction of Earth rotation. And then wider angle coverage. Uh, so that it can reach more places. Period of orbit is 24 hours. So, uh, so this sama dengan period of Earth rotation. Min minimum number of satellite is three can cover the whole Earth. Uh, kalau yang ini saya tak pasti sangat sebenarnya. So, um, kalau um, semua tu dapat satellite R is chosen. It is geostationary satellite has wider angle coverage, period of orbit 24 hours, and has many number of satellites three. Okay, good eh. So betul pilihan dia. Ah uh, tengok ah uh, back sebelum untuk ah uh, satellite minimum tu ah uh, tiga eh. Okay, ha uh, ini ini bagus sebab soalan ni tak semua menang. Sebab tu penting kita buat style uh, scoring. Sebab I, tak ada yang dapat full mark. Okay. Tak ada yang menang, men, tak ada yang menang, menang, menang besar. So first of all kita nak geostationary sebab okay, siapa tahu geostationary dengan stationary ni uh, example ya. Apa example of geostationary in real life? Biasa. Biasa. Ni, awak punya ni, TV, TV. Astro. Yeah. Astro. So, telco, telecommunication, siapa lagi. Handphone, you know, semua ni pakai geostationary. Apa contoh uh, non-geostationary? GPS. ISS. Uh, ISS, GPS, sebab GPS satu lagi untuk spy. Kan, sebab 
Contohnya US, kita nak spy on North Korea. Takkanlah awak nak tunggu dia pusing North Korea, tak ada. Awak nak maklumat cepat. So, awak kena paksa dia pergi. Kan, itu maksud uh, satelit bukan pegun lah, imbas Melayu kan, satelit bukan pegun. Maknanya dia, okay, satu lagi, ini about perspektif. Nama je satelit Joe Pegun ataupun stationary, tapi dia stationary tak sebenarnya? Is it really stationary? Enggak. Dia gerak sebelah Joe dengan S. Ah, yes. Macam kita. Contohnya, awak bawa kereta. For example lah, ini sebab ini penting juga, ini masuk re, apa relative motion ada kaitan dengan electromagnetism. Katakan awak bawa kereta, awak bawa 10 meter per second ke depan. Awak jumpa orang, awak racing dengan orang sebelah, dia pun bawa 10 meter per second. So, awak tengok dia, dia tengok awak. Nampak bergerak tak masing-masing? Tak, sebab relatively, you are both at the same frame of motion. Ini kita panggil. Kalau awak belajar quantum mechanics, awak akan dengar banyak perkataan ini. Frame of motion. Tapi kalau saya kat kedai kopi, saya duduk kat sini. Apa yang saya nampak? Orang ni dua ni bergerak ke tak? Bergerak. Bergerak eh? sebab relatively I am stationary. So ada relative motion. Bahasa Melayu saya tak lupa apa relative. Tahu tak? Ah apa mozek? Mas ke apa dia Gerakan relatif kot. Aku ni main rasik lah. Gerakan yang relatif. Ini maksud dia. Sebab tu sebenarnya satelit ni tak lah. Tak bergerak dia bergerak tapi sama dengan kita. Sebab kita bergerak dia pun bergerak. Sama-sama. So nampak as if aku tengok kau, aku tengok aku dulu tak bergerak. Padahal dulu bergerak. Okay. So maksud dia. Um, so ya yeah, kita bagi point. Kita suka dekat Joe Stationery kan. So kita bagi. Um, ya, yeah. Lepas tu kita nak angle paling besar kan. So kita suka lah 120. Pilih kita suka sama dengan bumi lah 24 hours. Okay. Satelit kita suka lagi banyak lah kan. So banyak kita ambil 5. Okay. So kita pilih pemenang dia. Tak dia dapat full mark. Tapi ada yang menang paling banyak iaitu ah, dia dapat 3. Dia kalah kat mana? Dia kalah kat sini. Tak apalah. Tak apalah, tapi dia menang yang lain, it's okay. Okay, ha. It, sebab uh, awak mungkin banyak buat soalan, uh, pilihan tu dia menang semua, tapi tak semestinya actually. Dia boleh kalah satu or dua faktor, tapi dia paling banyak menang, okay lah. Kan, macam main rumah sukan lah kan. Tak adalah, contohnya Johan rumah hijau, tak adalah dia menang semua, ada dia kalah kan. Dia kalah nampak tinggi ke, kalah 400 meter ke apa benda ke. Okay. Alright. So, tengok next slide. Uh, Ayman. <coughs> so, uh, uh, ini salah. Uh, kurang awak tak dapat markah kat sini. Okay. Sebab awak sebut tiga. Uh, walaupun dia kalah, tapi awak menangkan dia. Awak cakap uh, large number of satellite. Ah, apa pula, large apa, many eh, apa benda lah, apa pula, English eh, number of satellite Baru cakap, can cover uh, the whole earth, ataupun can cover more area ah, Aku tak cakap more places lah, awak cakap, kan dia ulang pula Okay, jawapan dia Alright, thank you sir Okay, alright, next one <coughs> Diagram 4.1 shows two identical feeding, feeding bottles floating in liquid P and liquid Q respectively. Feeding bottle floats because the net force acting on the bottle is zero. What is the meaning of net force? Net force is resultant force act on an object. Using diagram 4.1, compare the position of the bottles in liquid at P and liquid Q. Um, so soalan macam ni kita kena pecahkan dia salah satu so first compare position of bottles in liquid P and liquid Q. So saya jawab position of bottle in liquid P is higher than liquid Q. Next compare the compare the weights and the buoyant force that are acting on the bottles in liquid P and liquid Q. 
weight dia weight of bottle and liquid P is same as in liquid Q sebab dia kata uh, tu identical feeding bottle so weight dia sama. Untuk buoyant force, buoyant force acting on bottle in liquid P is greater than in liquid Q. Macam mana kita tahu sebab first um, dia kata sebab first kita tahu dia punya weight sama tapi position dia lain. So kat, kat sini nampak um, buoyant force acting kat P ni lagi greater. Lagi satu Sorry, sorry. Um, buoyant force acting on bottle in liquid P is same as in liquid Q. Hmm. Ini soalan yang ramai student salah. Dia selalu ingat benda lagi tenggelam, lagi timbul, buoyant force lain-lain. Tak. Barang tu kalau dia sama, celuplah kat mana-mana pun. Air laut ke, air sungai ke, air gula ke, it still have steam. It still have the same buoyant force. Sebab apa? Okay. Kita boleh proof pakai matematik. Siapa ingat formula buoyant force? F sama dengan apa? Ada banyak tapi apa yang 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 HVG ya. Yes, ya betul. Kita H rho GV. Ha rho GV. Rho GV eh. So saya cakap tadi buoyant force constant. Okey, kita log nilai ni. Okey. Katakanlah awak pergi air laut. Okey, sea water. Dia punya density tinggi tak kau Berbanding hmm. air biasa. Tinggi. tinggi kan? So kalau density tinggi, cuba fikir awak pergi mandi kat laut mati. Badan awak tenggelam banyak ke tenggelam sikit? Sikit. Sikit. So awak punya uh, V turun. So nampak tak? The counter balance. Kan? Walaupun tinggi density tapi volume rendah. So constant. Okay awak pergi celup pula dekat air sungai. Air sungai density dia tasik lah tasik. Air tasik density dia tinggi ke rendah? Rendah. Rendah. So kalau mandi ke air tasik, awak tenggelam banyak ke tenggelam sikit? Banyak. Banyak kan? So awak punya volume of uh, volume of submersion besar. So nampak tak? Pun counter balance. Sebab tu awak betul awak cakap buoyant force sama. Sebab memang tak berubah. Sebab dia sentiasa Naik turun. Ha, kalau ni naik, ni, ni turun. Tu turun, tu naik. Okay, objek yang sama campaklah kat mana-mana pun ada the same buoyant force. Tu penting. Jangan ingat, oh tenggelam banyak, buoyant force tu tak kuat lah. Tak, sama je eh. Cuma, kenapa tenggelam banyak? Sebab dia punya density kurang. So, B naik. Dia kena uh, counterbalance. Okay, yang penting buoyant force sama, weight pun sama. Okay, this is a very important point lah yang budak, budak form 4 saya pun uh, ada form 4 lah. Dulu ni chapter form 4 pun tak ingat. Okay, alright. I'll continue. Okay, untuk density pula, density of liquid P is bigger than liquid Q. Relate the position of the bottom and density of liquid to deduce a relevant physics concept. The greater the density of liquid, the higher the position of water liquid, uh, of water liquid. Fizik konsep Archimedes Principle. Alright, satu lagi. Back. So back, ini sangat strict. Nama orang salah. Nama ni bukan Archimedes. Archimedes. So S ni sekali. Ya, yeah, bukan tak ada philosophy. Eh, Archimedes. Ah, okay. Nampak macam lah. Itu pun kecoh ke? Memang, memang kita orang kecoh. Memang kalau nama salah je tak buat markah, fortunately. That's, that's the way it is. Eh? Yang paling banyak orang typo ni, ha, Bernoulli. Ha, tu paling bersepah orang typo. Bernola lah, Bernoulli, Bernoulli, macam-macam saya pernah tanda. Okay. Nama orang kena betul sebab apa? Contohnya, prinsip hukum Charles, Pascal, Archimedes. Nama kena elok, eh? nama kena betul-betul. Okay, next. Nargam shows a simple hydraulic jack. Explain how that M can be lifted and give a reason why cross-sectional area of piston A is smaller than cross-sectional area of piston B. Small force applied on the piston A to produce large pressure. The pressure is transmitted uniformly to all directions toward piston B. Large force is produced on the piston B to lift up load M. Cross-sectional area of piston A is smaller than cross-sectional area of piston B to produce greater force on piston B. Okay, alright. Betul-betul-betul. Okay, next. 
Tak payah, tak payah tunggu masa untuk kawan salin sebab slide ni awak ada je pun dalam group kan. Kita nak run through any error je. Okay. Teruskan. Okay. Uh, simple hydraulic jack in diagram 4.2 is not suitable to lift a car. So disuruh kita untuk modify simple hydraulic jack tadi untuk membolehkan hydraulic jack to lift car tu. And first dia nak method so that only small force is applied at piston A. Component to control flow of liquid. Component to lower the car and size of piston and type of liquid used. Kat sini dia dah bagi lima karakteristik so tak perlu tambah lagi lah kan sir? Betul. Ya, yeah, no need. The first handle is pull and push many times to produce large output force. Next, pakai valve to direct the flow of liquid through hydraulic system. Next, change the less control into electronic touch control to lower the car to desired weight more easily and safety. Ratio of cross-sectional area of big piston to small piston is large to produce greater output force and use incompressible liquid so that they tak produce air bubbles kat system or to transmit pressure equally. Bagus, betul. Kenapa kita tak suka air bubble kurang dalam engine kita, dalam engine oil? Sebab bila ada air bubble tu dia akan ganggu the transport of pressure dalam tu. Betul, sebab awak kena waste your force, awak kena bazirkan some of your force untuk compress balik bubble tu. So kita tak nak bubble ni. Kan kata kalau dalam container ni. Kita tak nak pun dia tapi dia ada. So terpaksa lah awak waste some of your force yang sepatutnya pergi kepada output force, kita kena tekan bubble ni supaya dia hilang. So rugi. Okay. So you have to waste some of your force to compress the bubble. Kan tak bagus. So kurang efisien lah the machine. Okay. 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 Um, nine, figure 9.1 shows two satellite, satellite A and satellite B with mass M. Satellite A is on the Earth's surface, while satellite B is an altitude H from the Earth's mass surface M. R is the radius of the Earth and H is the distance of the satellite from the surface of the Earth. Um, berdasarkan gambar, kita boleh tahu satellite B ni dia distance sikit uh, daripada A. A tu dia dekat atas muka bumi. Um, sorry lah, dia punya gambar tu macam lari sikit. So H tu um, jarak antara satellite ke muka bumi. So A state the definition of satellite. Satellite is an object in space that orbits or circles around the, a bigger object. Okay. Yang tu maknanya okey lah. Terus kerja. Okay, next. B, using figure 9.1, compare the distance from the center, the value of gravitational acceleration and the weight of the two satellites. So distance, from the center of satellite A is slower than satellite B. Value of gravitational acceleration of satellite A is greater than satellite B. Weight of satellite A is greater than satellite B. Um, B2 state the relationship between the distance of, from the center of the Earth and the weight of the satellite. When the distance from the center of the Earth decrease, the weight of the satellite increase. Num uh, B3 state the physical quantity that is constant in deducting between the distance from the center of the earth and the weight of the satellite as in answer 9B2. So bila nak dapatkan uh, bila nak dapatkan uh, dia punya weight to increase bila distance to decrease, uh, velocity of satellite is same. Then C, A, a satellite of mass uh, 1650 kg orbits the Earth at an altitude of 500 km. Given the mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 power of 24 kg, the radius of the Earth is 6.37 times power of 6 meter and gravitational constant equals to 6.67 times 10 power of negative 11. What is the value of the gravitational acceleration and weight of satellite? 
when one being on the surface of the earth. So um, when dia nak dekat atas surface of earth, so G equals to GM over R squared. Um, masukkan dalam formula, R2 uh, hanyalah radius bumi sebab dia betul-betul dekat atas permukaan bumi. So dapat 9.8134 meter per second per second. Untuk weight pula, W equals to mg. So darabkan dengan mass, uh, 1650 darab dengan jawapan de, uh, tadi ke atas dapat um, 16192.11 meter. Untuk second, located at an altitude of 500 km from the Earth's surface, So kita guna G equals to GM over R plus H uh, in bracket squared. Uh, kita kenapa kita kena uh, tambah H sebab dia kata uh, located at, at an altitude of 500 km. So kita tambahkan H2 tambah dengan radius bumi dapat 8.437 meter per second per second. Um, Weight pula kita darabkan dengan dia punya mass tadi uh, dapat 1391.05 Newton. Nak tanya boleh? Ya, yes, silakan. Uh, yang tadi yang sebelum ni punya boleh ke kalau velocity eh, mass of satellite yang constant? Yang tadi tu. Kalau mass sedikit. Okay, kalau untuk letak mass of satellite eh, yang constant. Hmm. Boleh, boleh. It is constant, boleh, boleh. Sebab hmm. mass tu apa maksud mass? Mass is number of atom in a body. And dia tak berubah no matter where you are kan. Weight yang berubah. Mass tak berubah. Okay, boleh boleh. Thank you sir. Okay. Okay, perlahan-lahan. Okay. D, you are required. Eh, NASA will use rockets to send replacement equipment for the International Space Station (ISS). As you are required to suggest suitable rocket features that can move at greater acceleration with safety features. State and explain your proposal based on the characteristics of the building material and the shape of the rocket. So, say so uh, Strong characteristic, strong metal with high strength and hardness so that it can withstand high pressure. Second, frame of rocket is made of low density metal, uh, lighter and can increase acceleration. Rocket need to carry oxygen tank enable combustion of fuel in space, aerodynamics shape, reduce air friction so that rocket can move faster. Uh, lastly, multi-stage rocket invented. Each stage has burning fuel, pump, and combustion chamber. It will, re it will release the fuel of each chamber completely where uh, it will release when fuel of each chamber completely burn. Tahu kan multi stage ni, pernah tengok roket naik kan? Dia naik, dia separate, 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 separate. Lepas tu tinggal yang last last kecil je yang ada orang kat atas tu, astronaut. Okay, tapi tak bagus sebab actually awak buang sampah. You are making a mess in the space, unfortunately. Dan uh, memang ada, we call it, apa panggil lah, space pollution. It's a real thing, jangan ingat. Sebab pencemaran bau, pencemaran bunyi, pencemaran angkasa pun ada juga. So, uh, okay, macam macam kelakar kan. Tapi once in a while, Nesa akan send macam cleaner untuk naik bukan sampah-sampah lah. Dia turun kutip, dia berikan, compilekan and dia send it back ataupun dia tolak lagi jauh. So instead of sampah tu kita 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 simpan, kita hantar ke tempat jauh. So kita biar sampah tu jadi masalah planet lain pula. So tu. Kesian alien kan, sampah macam-macam lah Sir, sir Ya Ni sampah ni macam dalam cerita World E eh? Yang penuh Ah, nanti lah dia Tapi tak adalah sesemak tu Tapi sekarang ni Sekarang ni satellite dah makin banyak Sebab so banyak-banyak dunia makin maju kan So it's quite 
Satu lagi space jam pun ada oh, Ingat traffic jam je ada Space jam pun ada Bila satellite terlampau banyak Dia boleh cause pelanggaran Accident So satellite Satellite berlanggar-langgar ni pun Quite common eh, Kadang-kadang boleh buat gaduh lah Satellite Cina langgar satellite India Eh kau faham langgar aku ni lah Okay And Kalau timbul hari tu dia kena ni lah Ada juga mahkamah tu Space court Ha, dia decide, oh kau salah kau bayar dia, dia salah kau bayar kau yeah, So jangan ingat kita je ada mahkamah Dekat angkasa pun ada mahkamah ni Alright Okay thank you SCF So okay cantik dah dua sekolah Sekolah next ni kita buat setengah dulu Mungkin bahagian B dulu Lepas tu sambung So sebab lima sekolah kan so dua setengah Dua setengah cantik lah cukup lah Okay uh, thank you SCF So next school Uh, Intergom lah Intergom buat ni dulu Bagi MB dulu boleh Okay boleh Saya boleh Okay Boleh tadi Ni bagian, bagian B dulu kan? Kita buat bagian B dulu lah. Ataupun buat hit dulu. Tak kisah mana-mana. Ah, okay. Uh, ni hit. Dengar kan? <laughs> okay, ni hit section 2. Eh, section, section B. Soalan 2. Uh, soalan 2A. State a physics concept that is used in the thermometer to measure temperature. So, uh, macam kita tahu, kita guna thermal equilibrium lah. Ha. Okay, alright. Okay. Okay, B1. State two characteristics of the physics concept mentioned in A. So, kita mention apa uh, characteristics thermal equilibrium. So, dia ada tiga kan? So, kita bagi dua je lah. Both region is the same temperature. Lepas tu, zero heat transfer between both region. Apa satu lagi, Khalida? Satu <laughs> Jeng, jeng. Apa um, syarat? Apa tu? Apa syarat? Kena thermal contact kan? Yes. Okay. Uh. Both must have thermal contact. Pada bahasa Melayu, sentuhan thermal. So, tiga syarat-syarat ni mesti ada. Baru kita panggil, dia dah capai thermal equilibrium. First, you need to have a contact lah. Thermal contact. Lepas tu, ada zero net heat transfer. Zero net heat transfer bukan bermaksud dah tak transfer tau. Ada. Cuma net dia zero. Aku bagi kau lima, kau bagi aku negatif lima. Tambah dia dapat kosong. So, dia tak bermaksud dah tak ada transfer of heat. Ada, cuma sama-sama banyak. Ini bagi sepuluh, dia boleh lipat bagi sepuluh. Macam pergi ni lah, buka puasa kan. Hantar jiran kuih, dia bagi kuih. Okey lah. Jangan awak bagi, awak bagi dia kuih, dia bagi air. Buang asam. Betul kan? So, same temperature. Okay, nice. Next. Okay. Uh, so, number two. Explain why the temperature of the boiling water remain at 100 Celsius although heat is being continuously supplied by the Bunsen burner. So, kenapa jadi macam tu? Kenapa dia stay je? Sebab both region is in thermal equilibrium. So, kalau dah thermal equilibrium, no heat transfer occur. So, tak ada rise in temperature. Hmm. Okay, next. Sekejap, sekejap eh. Okay, ini mungkin ah, kurang, kurang betul sikit. Saya rasa... Saya cakap boleh impon boleh ke saya? Apa? Saya cakap boleh impon dia selalu. Haa, boleh. Satu lagi actually, uh, sebabnya lagi lagi tepat saya rasa. Sebab, because uh, dah capai ni, latent heat of vaporization. So, because the heat energy received is used is used to Break the bond between molecule Kan sebab tu suhu tak naik-naik Dah sampai Maknanya kita dah capai Latent heat of vaporization Apa? Ha, haba pendam Sebab tu awak bagi heat Bagi-bagi-bagi Eh kenapa tak naik ni? Maknanya Heat tu kita pakai Untuk buat benda lain Which is to break the bond between molecule Latent heat of vaporization eh Okay 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 so Okay, next 
Okay. Uh, C. Dia bagi uh, empat jenis termometer. So, tu, uh, dia suruh explain the suitability of each characteristics of the thermometer to be used to measure temperature in the laboratories in school. Determine the most suitable thermometer. So, kita buat jadual lah. Okay. Uh, ni sebab kita kena pilih kan. Uh. So, dia ada empat karakteristik kat situ. First kali, thickness of glass box. So, glass box tu yang kat ujung thermometer tu. Uh. Okay, so kita nak tin ke tick, kita nak tin. Sebab reason dia easier heat transfer and increase the sensitivity of thermometer. Okay, so next, uh, kalau yang ni kita guna scoring. R dengan S dapat satu. Score kan dia? <laughs> Ha. Okay. So next diameter of the capillary tube Kita nak smaller diameter Supaya untuk uh, increase sensitivity juga Higher sensitivity Lepas tu more accurate reading of thermometer So yang dapat ha. skor Q dengan ni, R Ni pun awak boleh ni Cikgu saya ni ni Dia ada banyak nilai Awak bagi skor 1, 2, 3, 4 lah Ataupun kosong 1, 2 ha. Kalau ada pelbagai-bagai nombor So paling, yang paling lopek awak bagi kosong, yang paling power bagilah apa Kosong, satu, bagi tiga Yang second tu kalau cakap specific city boleh ke? Sebab dia relate dengan mass Kalau diameter eh? Wow. Uh -huh. Kalau apa, lower specific capacity Eh tak tak, specific capacity bergantung pada material Bukan, uh, bukan mass kan. Mass tu bergantung pada heat energy. Okey, specific capacity ni dia constant tau. Awak boleh buka dekat Google specific capacity of matter. Dia dah keluar. Water sekian-sekian. Ah, -sekian. uh, copper sekian-sekian. Okey. So mass tak kacau heat capacity. Mass kacau heat energy required to increase the temperature. Okey, sambung ah uh, tadi dah. Okay, so next ni freezing point dengan boiling point. Ada dua kat situ. So low freezing point dengan high boiling point of liquid used. Supaya um, kita guna low freezing point sebab tak nak easily froze in cold temperature. Hmm. So kalau high huh? tak, high boiling point. Saya angguk, ya. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> high boiling point pula so untuk uh, not easily evaporated <coughs> in hot temperature. Okay, sebab apa? Sebab thermometer ni kita nak dia maintain mercury tu state apa? Solid gas liquid. Liquid. Hmm, liquid kan? So kita nak kita tak nak pada cuaca sejuk dia jadi keras, kita tak nak pada cuaca panas dia hilang evaporate. So kita kena ambil very low freezing point and very high boiling point. So dia boleh maintain jadi liquid. Sebab liquid dah bagus kan dia boleh uh, bergerak-gerak. So kalau yang ni kan, yang nombor tiga ni low freezing point dengan high boiling point ni dapat satu markah each ke still kira satu markah satu. Nah, this one unfortunately dapat satu markah je sebab dia dah, dia dah lock freezing point dengan boiling point dalam satu kategori. So tak macam yang tadi tu. Ni dapat satu, -satu okay. markah je. Okay. Okay next, uh, adhesion to glass. So kita nak low adhesion to glass supaya Liquid tu won't stick to the wall of thermometer and affect the reading. So dia tak melekat bila kalau dia nak kalau suhu dia daripada tinggi jadi turun kan. So dia tak dalam melekat dekat atas tu tak nak turun. Macam tu lah. Huh? Lepas tu tak pakai benda lain. Macam setelahnya awak uh, minum air 100 plus ataupun air mineral kan. Awak minum sampai habis. Ada lagi tak air kecil-kecil kat dalam botol? Ada. Impossible. Impossible eh. Sebab ada surface tension lah. Tu kalau awak belajar solid physics lah. So ada adhesion effect. So kita, tapi mercury tak. Mercury dia almost won't stick at all. Okay, so pilihan kita adalah. Ah, so yang paling tinggi markah kat situ. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 markah. Kita pilih R lah. I choose so, thermometer R. Okay, Sebab because, hmm. ah, kita listkan balik saja karakteristik tadi tu. Okay, good. Alright. Settle. Next one. Okay. Okay, sikit lagi. Lepas ni kita rehat. Okay, almost done. Let's go. 
Okay, ni D pula. Uh, the normal body of temperature of a student is 37 Celsius. When this student is infected by H1N1 virus, his body temperature rises to 42 Celsius as measured by a mercury thermometer. Given that the density of mercury is 13,600 kilogram per meter cube, the volume of mercury in the thermometer is 1.2 darat sepuluh negative enam meter cubic and the specific capacity of mercury is 139 jute kilogram negative satu Celsius negative satu. So this will calculate number satu the mass of mercury in the thermometer. So ah uh, dia ada bagi density dengan volume mercury. Tu. So, saya guna formula density sama dengan mass over volume. So, uh, density dia 13,600. Volume dia 1.2 darab sepuluh kuasa negatif 6. So, dapat mass dia 0.01632 kg. Nak tukar jadi standard form ke? Oh, boleh. Ya, yeah, sure. Boleh je. 1.63 sepuluh kuasa. Kuasa 2. Tak oh. okay, kisah. Boleh je. Okay, next. Okay. Kita talk. Heat absorbed by the mercury from the body of H1N1 patient. So, kita guna Q sama dengan MC theta lah. Uh, M dia mass kita dah dapat tadi. Mass mercury tu 0.01632. So, C specific capacity 139. Uh, theta dia change in temperature kan. So, daripada 42, eh, daripada 37 jadi 42. So, beza dia lah 42 terhadap 37. So, kira-kira-kira dapatlah 11.34. Okay, jangan lupa unit patutnya ya, Joule, J. Joule. Okay, so itu masuk di kapasiti. So, make sense lah. Sebab rendah je, 11 Joule tu masuk akal. Masuk akal, make sense. Okay, alright. Kalau ada soalan, just tanya. Um, macam mana Mozak, okay ke? So far, you guys? Okay. Okay, if you have anything uh, in terms of terms yang tak pernah dengar, bagi tahu. Okay, jom. Seterusnya. Okay, last one. Sebelum kita habiskan untuk hari petang. Okay, siapa buat ni? <coughs> Ahmad Nabil. Ahmad Nabil. Sila oh, perdengarkan suara. Lupalah. Ya. lupalah saya buat. Allah, hai. Maaf, sir. Makan mas, Ahmad Nabil. Kelupaan. Minta maaf lah, man. Okay, uh, what is the what is the meaning of specific heat capacity? Uh, the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of 1 kg by 1 degree Celsius. Okay, cantik. Okay. Eh? Uh, okay, lepas tu, uh, based on information 2.1 end table, 2.1 compare the amount of heat supply, specific heat capacity, the final temperature and the change of temperature of aluminium dust and copper dust. Uh, so dia bagi requirement apa yang kita nak kena jawab kan Dia nak uh, compare amount of heat supply So the amount of heat uh, supply is constant Sebab dia guna api yang sama dengan bahan api yang sama tak ada berubah Dia bukan satu api kuat satu api pelan dia tak cakap pun so sama je The specific capacity The specific capacity for diagram 2.1 is higher than 2.2 The final temperature for diagram 2.2 is higher than uh, diagram 2.1 the change of temperature the change of temperature of copper dust is higher than aluminium dust the lower the specific heat, the lower the specific heat capacity the higher the change of temperature of a substance so dia suruh pakai semua yang di bahagian so kita guna je semua uh. kalau awak cakap um, specific capacity is inversely proportional pun boleh ataupun muatan apa tentu berkadar songsang dengan perubahan suhu pun boleh juga. Awak buat style apa? Style macam hypothesis tu lah. Style graf lah, sir. Ha, Ganti yang bawah ni. Ha, boleh. Pun boleh juga. Okay. Okay. Next one. <coughs> so, okay. Seperti bermasanya saya bersuara. Okay. Silakan Haiman. Okay. So, explain. Explain. Why the body of a cooking pot is made of good heat conductor whereas the handle of the pot is made of poor heat conductor. Ah. Uh, okay. Nak nampak periuk ah? Okey, kalau tak nampak periuk, okey. Ini aja. Silakan tengok. Okey, kenapa handle dia kena poor heat conductor and kenapa body dia ni kena good heat conductor? So the body of cooking pot is made of good heat conductor so that 
the heat will spread evenly in all direction lah. Kita panas ni dia macam semua apa tu mengalir lah kan produk tu kan pengalian pengalian haba. So biar kita masak tu biar enak menzakat lah macam tu. So thus the cooking will become more effective, efficient and time saving ya. Lagi cepat, lagi mudah, hmm, go shop buat terus. So next, kita cakap pasal handle pula. The handle of the pot is made of poor heat conductor so that it will remain low temperature, okey. Kita nak kata apa biar dia tak boleh mengalir haba macam tu ah. Biar kurang. So supaya thus the handle is safe to hold kan. Betul tak? Hmm. Ya. Yeah. Okey, kita selamat. Okey. Okey, bagus. Okay, ni soalan last dah. Uh, si ni dia bagi sem- ada uh, baldi, air baldi. Ah, betul, baldi dengan can ring. So, dia kata saja explain how to produce a portable container that is able to cool can drinks in a shorter time and to ensure the can drinks remain cold for a longer period based on the following aspect. So, dia nak uh, can drink to remain cold for a longer period. So, dia ada tiga je karakteristik kat sini. So, kita kena Pandai-pandai lah, tambah. Okay, yeah, first kali quantity of ice, lepas tu characteristics of container. Lepas so, additional features. Additional features needed. Okay. Okay, so large quantity of ice. Kita perlukan, kita perlukan large quantity of ice lah supaya beverage can be kept cold for a longer time. So tu, characteristics of container ni kita boleh tambah lah. Uh, kita boleh buat container with large volume supaya more be- beverage can be filled. Ya, yeah, so, so kar- uh, hmm. satu lagi, ni tak digalakkan, awak tak boleh ulang balik dia punya reason. So, dia minta apa? Remain cold for a longer time. tu yang dia minta. Okay. Oh. Ni, dia minta remain cold for a longer time. Awak pagi ulang balik benda yang sama. So, tak, tak digalakkan. So, awak kena goreng benda lain lah. So, last quantity of ice apa apa reason yang kita boleh goreng orang apa oh, bagus tu letak garam eh uh... more heat can be absorbed ah <laughs> more heat can be absorbed itu cara-cara nak sejukkan lagi letak garam tapi dia minta sekarang ni tentang ice punya quantity saja so uh, more heat can be absorbed oh, okay so second tadi uh, container with large volume supaya kita boleh letak more beverage Yeah, can be filled. Hmm. So, uh, yang ketiga ni under characteristics of container juga high specific capacity of container supaya boleh withstand very high or low temperature. Ha, taklah dicari tiba-tiba. Lepas tu, uh, tu yang keempat handle made up of rubber easier to grip. Ha, reason dia. So, yang last kali ni uh, addition, ni macam additional features eh. Ha, wrap container with cloth untuk avoid increase in temperature inside container. Betul ke hmm. Betul ke? Hmm. Wrap container with cloth Satu lagi yang boleh tambah yang Amma cakap tadi Put salt on the ice Sebab apa? To lower the uh, freezing point So ice tu kekal Kekal ice lah, letak cair Okay So kalau letak salt, dia punya, freeze, dia punya melting point mungkin Instead of kosong jadi negatif tiga negatif empat kan so dia boleh maintain menjadi ais tak cair lah so, hmm. kalau letak penutup put a lid on top uh, of the container boleh ke? yes put a lid on top of the container satu lagi saya boleh goreng ni juga uh, vacuum uh, apa cakap vacuum seal maknanya kita kita kurung kontainer uh, ni dengan vacuum So, heat tak boleh masuk sebab heat cannot travel ni vacuum. Ha, oh, eh, cikgu kalau heat tak boleh travel in vacuum, kenapa kita rasa panas dengan matahari kan matahari dengan sini matahari ke bumi kan vacuum. Saya boleh jawab. Pula, kata heat tak boleh travel in vacuum, tapi macam mana kita boleh kena matahari panas? Light je tu. Apa light? Uh, light, light carry heat sekali, light buat energy okay, Bagus, ha, ni dah masuk quantum physics lah eh Quantum physics, photons So light, uh, matahari dihantar UV, UV ray uh, 
uh, itu dia bawa sekali dengan heat. Uh, ni uh, teori of Einstein lah. Kuanta, kuanta. Kita belajar. Chapter 7 ni, eh, last one. Okay, alright. I'm happy. Ada lain nak tambah apa? I think it's pretty clear. Okay, alright. So good. I'm happy. Okay, kita dah habis kan Mr. Gom. Uh, for heat. Ah, dah sir. Electricity je. Okay, nampak. So, okay. Tengok jam ke apa? Oh, nampak pun eh. Pak setengah, nanti. So, kita sambung lagi dengan dua sekolah setengah pada pukul 8 eh. Okay, alright. So, kita boleh lihat saya. So, kita sambung nanti dengan Mr. Gom, separuh, SDS dan Mozak. Okay, boleh eh. Yang sah dengan SDS lah. Kau cabut lagi. Oh, malam ni tak payah. Cabut lah. Masuk lah sekali. Siap member tuan prepare kan. Okay, alright. So, uh, and sebab bila kita bincang ni, tengok banyak maklumat tambahan yang awak belajar kan. Banyak benda-benda yang additional yang saya tambah, awak tambah, semua tambah. So, macam perkongsian ilmu lah. Okay, so good job everyone. Kita jumpa pukul